add water, poison air, <clears throat> streams, crops. Man has polluted the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah made pure, clean. Allah didn't do this, man did this. Anytime you have issues where you can't drink water, lead poisons in water, killing children, innocent children, may Allah have mercy on them. <clears throat> then there's a problem. There's a serious problem. The stewardship of the earth, the caring for the resources, has been betrayed by man. And it's very plain to see. All you have to do is open your eyes and read. Anytime you can't get water that you pay for, that's poison, then something is terribly wrong. And Allah says, in the last days, signs will be manifest. And that's exactly what's happening right now. If you look around the earth and see what's going on. We have uh, a COVID micro virus that is on the earth right now. Allahu alam. Only Allah knows if it's manufactured by man eh, or is this a natural evolution in the creation. Allahu Akbar. Only Allah knows. We, they don't know <clears throat> except the ones that portrayed the crime. And I hope Allah punishes them to the maximum for taking human souls away from this planet earth. Allahu Akbar. So I'm saying that because it's important, it needs to be said. My eyes are open. All of our eyes should be wide open. We're Muslims. And we should look at the reality of what we're looking at. There's something that is not uh, clear to us as Muslims. We're in darkness. See, darkness is not necessarily physical light. Darkness is the ability when you can't see truth, then you're in darkness. In fact, that's what scripture is talking about when it says darkness, duleman. Duleman means spiritual darkness, rational darkness. You can't see what's going on. You see with your eye, but it doesn't register with your mind. See, that's what we got to connect with, Allahu Akbar. But today, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, I just wanted to uh, say a few words to us in reference to Yamul Jum'ah. Yamul Jum'ah is very, very important for Muslims. And... Uh, for me personally, <laughs> the, the more Jumas I have that I go to, the more important I realize it's more important than I thought it was the last time I was there. Juma is actually an opportunity to reconnect yourself with your Lord. That's exactly what it is. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Juma is an opportunity to reconnect yourself with the true reality, which is the Quran, Kareem which is given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Juma is serious. You know, I used to go to Juma, I, I got to go to Juma. No, 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 no. Juma is an opportunity to reconnect yourself with your God. I mean, that's big time. So we need to understand that, that Juma, how many times have you went to Juma? How many Jumas have you missed? See, your Jumas are going to account for you in Yamul Akira. That's what people don't realize, and what Muslims don't realize. Everything you do in this religion is waiting for you. Everything. Your zakat that you gave all these years is waiting for you. Your salat, your fajr prayers that you made all these years are waiting for you. Your obedience to Allah is waiting for you. So everything you've done that's good, Allah is going to multiply it, expand on it, make it more, and give you your reward in Yamul Akira. Allahu Akbar. Juma is an opportunity to cleanse ourselves from the funk of the world, from the funk of shaitan, from the bad smells, the haram, the hog smells, from pollution, air pollution, water pollution. It's an opportunity to cleanse yourself again. It's a seven-day cycle. Every seven days you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Juma. And Juma is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made, has made it fardul, obligatory for male, for the male, for the male. That's important, especially the men. Why? Why not the female? The female is taking care of whatever you have that has value. She takes care of your children. 
She regulates anything that you work for. She safeguards that till you return. So she's already working for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have a good woman, you're a blessed man. Allahu Akbar. Believe me. <clears throat> you are very, very blessed. Because women set the tone for men. If there are no good women in your neighborhood, there will be no good men. Allahu Akbar. That's a fact. So all you got to do, you want to check a neighborhood out, check the women out. Forget about the men. See, men gravitate to women. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So that's how you can tell. If there are no good women, there ain't going to be no good men. Your mama was a good woman. Look at you. You're a Muslim. Allahu Akbar. She did something that was right. She taught you taqwa. Right, wrong, good, bad. Women, not do, they're not doing that anymore, unfortunately. We had good mothers. Allahu Akbar, may Allah give them Jannah, all of them. Allahu Akbar. But now, there's a situation now where there's, the mothers are not teaching what they taught years ago because the value system has dissipated here in America. So Allah says here in the Quran, in the 62nd surah of the Quran, which is appropriately entitled Juma, that's the name of the surah, Allah says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He says, Yala Dina Aminu inni salati yamul juma'a fasul le vikul Allah wa dalakum kairul lakum in kuntun talamun. Allahu Akbar. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Salak Allahu Lazim. Allah says here in the ninth ayah, and nine is. Appropriate because there's knowledge in the number of nine. How many months before when a woman's pregnant before the baby comes? Nine. This ayat is in the Quran for a reason. Every ayat in the Quran numbered has knowledge. Even the numerological knowledge, the numer numerical verses in the Quran have wisdom. Why is it nine? Nine months, 40 months, a child comes. Nine months, a woman's pregnant. Normally, sometimes it comes early or a little later, but normally it's nine. So nine is a revelation number. It's a revealing number. Numbers have knowledge. Allah could have said the baby come in seven months or five months, but he said nine. This ayat is in the Quran for a reason. Yaladina aminu in their salati. All you who believe, it says those who believe, not Muslims. That's another thing. And I said it many, many times, a, a mukmin is way up here close to Allah. A Muslim is down here. It takes work. You got to work to get up there. You got to go to Jum, you got to go to Juma prayer. You got to give zakat. You got to make hajj if you can. You got to get up at 5.21 this morning and make fajr prayer. That's a, that's a Muslim. That's a believer. The Muslim's in the bay of snoring at 5.21. But the believer has got the crown on the ground for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. That's the difference between a Muslim and a Mukman. A Mukman gives zakat to Master al Hadid to help the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue in this crisis. Yaladina Aminu in this alaiti, O you who believe, believers, male or female. The believer is one who comes to Jummah strictly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He don't give a damn if it's Good Friday. Good Friday is always good for Muslims. Allahu Akbar. Remember that. Right now there's pagan concepts. There's a pagan spirit floating through the communities right now. They're getting ready for Easter. And I have nothing against them. May they have a great Easter. But for Muslims, it's not acceptable. There is no physical resurrection of no man on Friday or Sunday. We don't tolerate that, not in Islam. Allahu Akbar. We respect them, but we, we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good Friday? Friday is always good for Muslims because it's Yamul Jumat. And understand this. During the time of Isa alayhi salam, my dear brother, Jesus the Prophet, I love him, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. There was no day called Friday. There was no Easter. There was no Easter egg hunt with jelly beans. Hmm. There was no Easter suit clothes, the Easter bonnet. Hmm. There was no Easter parade. 
So where did this come from? Obviously, Isa alayhi salam didn't introduce these pagan concepts to Christianity. Somebody else did. Somebody called Shaitan. Somebody who came in and corrupt the good work that Isa alayhi salam did. Isa was a Muslim. Jesus, every prophet was a Muslim. <laughs> Moses was a Muslim. All of them were Muslim. And Muslim simply means one who submits his or her will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. It's got nothing to do with my skin color. That has nothing to do with it. I don't care if I'm from Palestine or I'm from the Bronx. It don't make no difference. A Muslim is a human being that submits his will or her will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. They are good Christians. Allahu Akbar. They are, good, they are good Christians. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. I accept them, and that's in the Quran. Allah said we have to accept them, and we do. Yaladina Amenu, O you who believe, when the call is proclaimed to pray on Friday, the day of assembly, Allah says, hasten earnestly to the remembrance of Allah and leave off your business and traffic, and that is best for you if you but knew Allahu Akbar. So Juma is a day of assembly. Jamia. We come together, we solidify, we come together as one spirit, one mind. Everyone in this room should be on the same mental frequency. We should be thinking about Allah. We shouldn't be thinking about what we're going to eat when we leave the masjid today. Or what we're going to eat when we get to now. No, not now. We should be on one mental frequency. That way we get the maximum blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We shouldn't have any distractions when you come to Juma. It should be strictly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. The call is proclaimed the prayer on, the, on Friday, the day of assembly, hasten earnestly to the members of Allah. So we have to come together like this. Allah said in the Quran that the Muslim community should be like this, a, brick, a solid brick wall. That's the Quran, no hadith. So each one of us is a brick for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of us is a foot soldier for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we got to get like this. I don't care if you're from Egypt, it doesn't matter. We're still brothers. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. We have to get rid of this. It's shaitan that's separating the Muslim community. Shias, Ahmadiyyas, Sunnis, Ansar community. And I can go on and on and on. That's shaitan's work. There was no Ahmadiyyas around when Prophet Muhammad Islam was around. No Shiites, no Sunnis. It was Muslim. Excuse me, Allahu Akbar. We have to get back to that. Allah says in the Quran, create not sects in your community. That's scripture. Think about that. Were none of them around during the time of Prophet Muhammad. When the Prophet passed, Shaitan came in the front door. Oh, brother, you're a Sunni. Oh, you're Ahmadiyya. Uh, you answer Allah community. They split the Islamic and that's when the Islamic community as a whole, the International Brotherhood, went down. Saudi Arabia. In 1980, I was in Saudi Arabia. I made Hajj 43 years ago. Look what happened to Saudi Arabia. When Prophet Muhammad was there, there was no king. There was no monarchy in Saudi Arabia. That came after the Prophet died. Hmm. Same thing with Christianity. There was no Easter. When Esau was around, that came after the prophet died. So you see the pattern of shaitan? He waits until the light goes away, and if you don't keep the light, he sneaks in the back door, because you can't see him, because you're not following God's word. If you keep reading the Quran, Allah will keep your eyes focused. You'll see shaitan before he sticks his head up. That's the key of the Quran, Allahu Akbar. So I'm sharing this with you quickly because the prophet said you should want for your brother and sister what you want for yourself. I want you to see this. Esau was a good prophet, Allahu Akbar, I love him. He's a, he was a Muslim. But what they have pinned on him is haram. Allahu Akbar, let us think about this quickly. Rabbana atina fi dunya hassanatan wa fil akhirati hassanatan wa qina radadab al-nar Oh Allah, increase our faith, increase our knowledge, increase our health, increase our wealth so we can use it 
to propagate this religion of Al-Islam and have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and accept our prayer and protect our families. Amen. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We openly witness that there's no god except Allah سبحانه وتعالى, and we witness that our dear beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, that he is رحمة للناس, that he is the mercy to all the worlds. السلام عليكم dear Muslims. Allah says here. The Quran is the most very important instrument in the religion of Al Islam. The Quran is the reason why we are here. It was the Quran that made Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet Muhammad didn't make the Quran; the Quran made him. It was the Quran that made the Honorable W. D. Muhammad. He didn't make the Quran; the Quran made him. It's the Quran that made Abu Bakr, Master Bilal, Hamza, Ali, Lady Khadija. Mm -hmm. The words in the Quran made them. The Quran, the words in the Quran, is making you. The more you read the Quran, the better you're going to become. It's just that simple. It's not the Imam. It's not me who articulates. It's Allah. These words belong to Allah, not me. So when we read the Quran, the most important center that evolves around the universe in the ideology of Islam is the Quran. Allahu Akbar. And Allah says here, Prophet Muhammad sallam, the subject of the chapter is about Quran from the lips of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is well known that the Quran was revealed in Arabic, Fusha Arabiya. The language to Prophet Muhammad sallam as a mercy, rahmatin. First, rahmatin. Hudden, guide. We need guidance. Glad tidings and a warning. That's the purpose of the Quran. First, rah, rahman, rahim, mercy and guidance. That's what we're missing. We don't know where to step. We need guidance. You have that. You don't know what to do. You don't, should I marry this sister? Should I go here? Should I take this job? We need guidance. That's what the Quran is. It shows you where to step, who to marry. The Prophet memorized the Quran totally and lived it in every minute of his life. I just want to put the brakes on right here. If you know one ayat, one line in Al Fatiha, if that's all you know. That can take you to Jannah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. If you know that Bismillahi Rahman Rahim, live that in your life. With Allah's mercy, with Allah's blessing. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. You say that every time you say Al Fatiha. You say Al Fatiha 17 times a day. I know I did the research. Seventeen times a day you recite our Fatiha. Bismillahi rahman rahim. Unless you ain't praying, then that's something different. Then I ain't even talking to you. Unless you're doing sooner prayers, then you're doing more. Bismillahi rahman rahim. Seventeen times a day. Two in Fajr. Four. Hmm? Dur. Four Asa. Three Maghrib. Four Isha. Seventeen. Do the math. So you're saying this 17 times a day. Bismillahi rahman rahim With Allah's name. Think about those words when you're reciting them. Let them go into your, con your subconscious mind. Let those words vibrate in your head. Bismillahi rahman rahim And think about it as you recite them. Those words will take on action in your system. I bear witness. Allahu Akbar. So the prophet is telling you that the answer to our problems, the guidance comes from the Quran Kareem. That's what the answer is. It's in the word of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't follow no man. We follow the Quran. We follow the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That's it. And Allah says that Muhammad, he is Katam al -Nadiyin. Some of y'all read that. Katam al -Nadiyin. He's the seal of the prophets. Ain't nobody coming after Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody's coming. If the earth goes to the year 20,500, 50,000, 500, there will never be another prophet other than Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. So that should tell you something. That should tell you how potent, how powerful, how expansive, how full the Quran is. Allah said in the Quran, he has left nothing out of this book. Alhamdulillah. Shukran, my brother. Thank you. He has left nothing out of this Quran. Absolutely nothing. COVID is in here. The stock market crash is in here. Everything is in here. Hitler is in here. The resurrection is in here. Space travel is in here. Everything is in the Quran. So Prophet Muhammad said that we should memorize the Quran, learn it, recite it, memorize it, and to live it. If you know you're not, suppo you're not supposed to eat hog, why are you eating hog? In short talk, I will bring your attention to some Prophet Muhammad said the Quran, so that we will be inspired and motivated in our daily lives. In so doing, we will, inshallah, be able to practice the teachings of Allah without difficulty. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet encouraged the Muslims to read the Quran so that it will be a witness. I want you to listen to this. The Prophet encouraged the Muslims to read the Quran so that it will be a witness and a savior for them on the day of judgment. I hope you heard that. Every verse that you learn from this Quran, I don't care if it's Bismillah, that's it, is going to be a savior for you in Yamul Juma when you face Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's right here in the Quran. The Prophet encouraged Muslims to read the Quran so there will be a witness and a savior for you. Can you imagine meeting Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Because every all the ayats that you took time. To learn while you were in the earth, in this biological body, in this realm of reality that we're in right now. Because we're we going to be in a different form when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ain't going to be no flesh in front of Allah. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. But every, your spirit, your soul, your nasikun, let me give you the Arabic, your nasikun, your nasikun is going to be in front of Allah. When you read the Quran, th those words are carved on your heart and your intellect. So every time you take time to struggle to learn one ayah from Allah, Allah is going to magnify that and make it bigger. Read the Quran so that it will be an intercessor for you on the day of judgment. All the bad stuff I did, all the bad stuff you did, and I did some terrible stuff. Allah Akbar. When we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good stuff that I did is going to speak for you. Not just for me, but for you. Even the prophet has the power to give intercession for his community. Hmm. Reading the Quran, the prophet encouraged the Muslims to read the Quran so that it will be rewarded by Allah for every surah that you took time to, lit, to read in your busy, busy world, for every ayah, for every word, kalimah, and for every letter, harf. The prophet said, anyone who reads one letter from the book of Allah will have blessings and reward. And each good thing is equal to ten rewards. Alif, Lam, Mim is a letter. But Alif is one letter. Lam is a letter. Mim is a letter. The Prophet encouraged the Muslims to recite the Quran in a chanting and beautiful voice. The Prophet encouraged Muslims to read the Quran even if they find it difficult. Now, for you brothers that don't that think it's a problem, the Prophet encouraged the Muslims to read the Quran even if, if they find it difficult. I got di we all have difficulty. <laughs> As it is a blessing from Allah to read it, those whose mother tongue is other than Arabic may find it difficult to re recite the Quran. For them is a reward indeed. Anyone who recites the Quran and is an expert, a hafiz, the word hafiz means to guard, okay? <laughs> It means to guard the Quran. This is what the Prophet said. Anyone who recites the Quran and is an expert in it will, in the hereafter, will be with the ambassadors, the messengers of Allah, who are the noblest, 
and the most honest and anyone who recites the Quran with difficulty. I want you to hear this. With difficulty, with difficulty and hard pronunciation will have a double reward and blessing. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So don't worry about, uh, I can't recite. Musa, alayhi salam, Moses had a knot in his tongue. I don't know if y'all read the Quran. Mo Moses used to stutter. Oh yeah, Allahu Akbar. Now here's a prophet of Allah that stutters. Now, what did we do when we were in school when somebody stuttered? We laughed at him. <laughs> so Allah picked Moses even though he stuttered. He had problems relating to Pharaoh. He had to go before Pharaoh and articulate the Torah to Pharaoh. He was afraid. Read the Quran. But Allah picked him anyway. And Moses picked Aaron as his assistant because Aaron was more educated formerly than Moses. But Moses was the man, Allahu Akbar. So here's a prophet that has that stuttered, that had a knot in his tongue. He couldn't articulate God's word purely, clearly. But he had the courage to go on what God told him. And it's the same thing with you, with this community. Don't worry about your weaknesses. Don't worry about I ain't ready. Don't worry about I don't know a lot of Arabic. It's not about that. It's about the heart. This is what counts. Moses stepped towards Pharaoh, and y'all all know what happened with that. Moses won the argument. Pharaoh was drowned in the Red Sea. So I'm sharing this with you to let you know that the Quran is the answer to this community. Allahu Akbar. And finally, there are four categories of people that read the Quran. And all of us, including myself, is in one of these categories. The Prophet said, concerning those who read the Quran and those who do not read the Quran, there's Muslims that don't read the Quran until Ramadan comes. The Prophet compared them in similitude and examples. Number one, a reciting believer. A believer, male or female, who recites the Quran is like a centron. A centron is a flower. Having a sweet fragrance and a good taste. Number two, a non-reciting believer. is a believer that don't recite the Quran. A believer who, who, does, who does not read the Quran is like a date fruit which has no fragrance but has a sweet taste. Allahu Akbar. Number three, a hypocrite reciter. There's a lot of them running around. A hypocrite reciter who recites the Quran may impress the audience only, but not Allah. His similitude is that of a fruit which has a good smell, but a bitter taste. And finally, a hypocrite non-reader. If a person who is considered to be a hypocrite or non-believer does not read the Quran, then he is like a odor. A odor. It does not have a good taste and it has a bitter smell. Those are the four categories of people that profess to read the Quran. This is from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah. And finally, in conclusion, Allah says, Verily, in this Quran is a message for people, all people who would truly worship Allah. We sent you not, but as a rahmatin. I just said this earlier in the first part. A rahmatin, as a mercy for all creatures, Europeans, Caucasians, Japanese, everybody. Prophet Muhammad is a universal prophet. He's not just sent to America or to the Arabs. We sent you not, but as a mercy for all creatures. Say what has come to me by inspiration is that your Lord God, Allah, is one, Ahad. Will you therefore bow to his will in Islam? But if they turn back, say, I have proclaimed the message to you all alike in hakum, in truth. But I know not whether that which you are promised is near or far. The punishment may be right around the corner. We don't know. That's what Prophet Muhammad is telling us. Allahu Akbar. It is he who knows, Allah, what is open in speech, and what you hide in your hearts. I know that, that, that it may be a trial for you and a grant of worldly livelihood to you for a time. 
Say, O oh my Lord, Rab, you judge in hawk and truth. Our Lord, most gracious, Rahman, the Rahim, is the one whose assistance should be sought against the blasphemies that you utter. Allahu Akbar. So, if your family is celebrating Easter and Good Friday, <coughs> respect your family. Be respectful to your family members. Have mercy on them. Participate with them. Don't get involved in the pagan concept of Easter or Good Friday. But I say to you this. Today is Good Friday because today is Yamul Juma. Assalamu alaikum. You come. <clears throat>